Look at the sky and see if you can count the stars. That's how many descendants you will have. Welcome. Thank you for praying with us today. The season of Lent has begun. It is a time of contemplation and renewing our relationship with God to prepare ourselves for the joy of Easter. Wherever we are, God is with us, here and now. Let us pray. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord. Let us then turn and ask God's mercy as we confess our sins. God forgives you, forgive others, forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away our sin. Let us approach our God in peace. Amen. Almighty God, through prayer and discipline, may we participate in the mystery of Christ's suffering. And by following him, May we come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Bible is a living story. Let us listen for what they are saying to us now. The story contains two gifts from God. First, Abraham is promised a son and many descendants. Second, God promises the promised land to them. Without any evidence, Abram trusts God's faithfulness. A reading from the book of Genesis. Later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision. Abram, don't be afraid. I will protect you and reward you greatly. But Abram answered, Lord, all-powerful, you have given me everything I could ask for, except children. And when I die, Eliza of Damascus will get all I own. You have not given me any children, and this servant of mine will inherit everything. The Lord replied, No, he won't. You will have a son of your own, and everything you have will be his. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said, 
Look at the sky and see if you can count the stars. That's how many descendants you will have. Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord was pleased with him. The Lord said to Abraham, I brought you here from Hor in Shadley and I gave you this land. Abraham asked, Lord God, how can I know the land will be mine? Then the Lord said to him, Bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a dove, and a young pigeon. Abram obeyed the Lord. Then he cut the animals in half and laid the two halves of each animal opposite each other on the ground. But he did not cut the dove and the pigeon in half. And when birds come down to eat the animals, Abram chased them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep and everything became dark and frightening. Sometime after sunset, when it was very dark, a smoking cooking pot and a flaming fire went between the two halves of each animal. At that time, the Lord made an agreement with Abraham and told him, I will give your descendants the land east of the Sheha River on the border of Egypt as far as the Euphrates River. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One that his life is in danger, Jesus sees that he still has much to do in his ministry. But the time is coming soon when the people will see his entry into Jerusalem and finally recognize him for who he is. Yet the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Oh glory to you, O Lord. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, You had better get away from here. Everyone wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, I am going to force out demons and ill people today and tomorrow, and three days later I'll be true. But I am going on my way today and tomorrow and the next day. After all, Jerusalem is a place where prophets are killed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, your people have killed the prophets and have stoned the messengers who were sent to you. I have often wanted to gather your people as a hen gathers her chicks under our wings but you wouldn't let me now your temple will be deserted you won't see me again until the time when you say blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord this is the gospel of the lord all praise to you O christ in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen there are three major points from our gospel reading today the first is the Pharisees and Herod. The second is Jesus and his mission, but the third is Jerusalem and the desolation. Jesus and his mission is our focus from these three points because Jesus is our message and eternal hope. Last week we discussed about Jesus' temptations, but the devil, of course, but let me say the tempter and the deceitful one, according to Father Stephen. 
in the sermon last Sunday. Today is another story of threat. Yes, threat to have Jesus killed by Herod, according to the Pharisees. Looking at the passage carefully, one might see that the threat is likely to be a serious one because Herod had just killed John the Baptist and putting John's head on a platter for a little girl at the request of her wicked mother. But I love the response Jesus gave the Pharisees. Go and tell the fox for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. On the third day, I finish my work. What a wonderful and brilliant response. I could imagine the people around Jesus would be so surprised and would be saying, Ha, ah, this man doesn't like himself at all. But Jesus knew and also meant what he was saying when he said, Whoever loves or saves his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. This is confirmed by all the evangelists. I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all have it recorded in similar ways. All these, I mean temptations, threats and the likes of them, are nothing but mere distractions for Jesus and possibly for us today. Because Jesus knew his mission, the purpose why he came, which is for redemption. And the only way to fulfill such a mission was to be focused. This is why we also have to know our purpose in life and be focused in order to avoid any distraction that may come our ways. In closing, let us always pray to our Heavenly Father to help us as we continue on this journey of Holy Lent, not to be distracted in life, because the distractions will come in any form, be it positive or negative, good or bad, successes or failures, Joys or sorrows could be distractions. Remember, Joseph, Daniel, and even Jesus refused to be distracted on their mission fields. But Samson, the great warrior, Saul, the first king in Israel, and our own brother, Judas Iscariot, couldn't finish well because they were distracted on their way to glory and fulfillment. May the Lord help us to finish well and finish strong and not to be distracted. Amen.
trusting in God's promises. God's mercy washes away our past mistakes and regrets, helping us to move forward in faith and love. Let us pray. Holy God, we trust that when we need bread, you won't give us a stone because you are good and loving and listen to our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church around the world and all its rich diversity. Help us to faithfully share your good news in fresh ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace. May those in authority be guided by your wisdom. May violence, suffering and injustice cease and your peace spread to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in any kind of pain, physical, emotional or spiritual. We pray especially for Alain, Christine, Thomas, Isabel, Helen Jane, Paul, Carol, Lizzie, Kingsley, Hans, Pete, Jan, Jacqueline, Andre, Dominique, Gert, Ingrid, Danny, Jeffrey, Lena, Jürgen, Caroline, Evelyn, and Jenny. Lord, ease their burdens. Let them feel your presence. And may all of us find healing and wholeness through you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in sorrow. Shine the light of new life into their darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, be with us this coming week as we journey with you to the cross and resurrection. Help us to trust that you are close by, guiding our words and actions each step of the way. And now we remember the words that Jesus taught us, praying together in whatever language we feel most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. God's seed has been planted in us. It might remain hidden beneath the earth, but soon it will blossom with new life. As we live with God's blessing, we are filled with that same hope. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves Take up your cross and follow him. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.